Hello, my name is Gali Gofarb, and in this lesson, I will be talking about the nine lifestyle changes that support post-traumatic stress disorder healing. Post-traumatic stress disorder is a condition that develops in some people who have experienced a shocking, scary, or dangerous event in their life. The symptoms include either flashbacks, nightmares, or fe fearful thoughts, which involve reliving of the traumatic event. Also, symptoms include avoidance of places, events, objects, and thoughts, or even feelings that are reminders of the traumatic experience. And also, perhaps ongoing negative thoughts or feelings of guilt, blame, or loss of interest in enjoyable activities. Statistics show that practically anyone can develop post-traumatic stress disorder at any age, including war veterans, children, and people who have been through any physical. other really serious event. According to the National Center for Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder, about seven out of every hundred people will experience post-traumatic stress disorder at some point in their lives. Different factors play a part in whether a person will develop post-traumatic stress disorder or not. And if a person has the support from other people, such as friends or family members or a support group, and they have a positive coping strategy to help them get through difficult events, then they will tend not to suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. But if a person is constantly part of dangerous events and traumas or constantly sees other people getting hurt or dying while personally feeling helplessness and fear, and then this person has little or no social support after the event, and there may be anything additional in their personal lives, stress from other aspects, then they will probably be likely to suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. Now getting help, is, getting help for post-traumatic stress disorder is the basis for recovery. Different therapies work for different individuals, but one therapy will help anyone suffering from this condition, and that is lifestyle changes including nutrition. Why will nutrition help? Well, firstly, I'll briefly explain a little bit about our brain, and then I'll explain why nutrition is of utmost importance for its proper functioning. Our brain cells fire nerve impulses in specific neural pathways that they are used to firing in, whether this be beneficial for us or not. Now, once trauma has taken place in our life, our neurons relive the event through persistent, non-beneficial thought patterns firing in certain ways. Now, once our brain is conditioned to fire through specific neural pathways, it needs external intervention in order to change these pathways to create new ones. Now, behavioral modification therapy helps create new thought patterns, and over time, these new thought patterns will, for the most part, take over the non-beneficial thought patterns. However, in order for the brain to be responsive to any kind of therapy, it must be in a healthy state. The brain must get the right nutrients that it requires in order to be in a receptive state to accept neural pathway modification through, the, through therapies. So our brain needs specific nutrients that will help it heal itself. Our brain also requires that we take specific actions that will ensure optimal brain functioning. So with that said, we shall now go into the specifics and I shall help you get your brain into its most optimal condition in order for behavioral strategies and other therapies to easily help you create new thought patterns that will get you out of focusing on the traumatic event and instead into focusing on the positive side of the situation. You still have a life to live and that life is in the present, not in the past. And once you create a nourishing environment for your brain cells, it will be easier for you to focus on the good sides of your story and gratitude will take over the negative feelings. This is a process which does take time. 
and to ensure it happens in the fastest possible way, your lifestyle habits should support this process. In this video, I will focus on nine dietary and lifestyle habit changes that once changed, they will help your brain to function at its best and even help create new brain cells that can be programmed to help you thrive rather than suffer in life. So let's get into the nine lifestyle changes that support post-traumatic stress disorder healing. Number one, eating whole carbohydrate rich foods throughout the day. This action is so important to brain function and to feeling good. Complex carbohydrate rich foods have a very positive effect on brain health and on memory due to the fact that during complex carbohydrate digestion, our body forms glucose, which supplies our brain cells with fuel, but the body also forms glycogen in the process from any excess complex complex carbohydrates. Now, glycogen can be quickly converted back to glucose when the brain or body needs energy and carbohydrates are not immediately available. But glycogen is not only available as an immediate energy source for our brain. Glycogen is more than that. It actually has been found to be a dynamic molecule having many beneficial consequences on brain cell function and memory. We have a very limited and low capacity to store glycogen. Therefore, having a regular source of complex carbohydrates in our diet increases glycogen levels and enhances brain function and memory, whereas not consuming enough complex carbohydrates will lead to glycogen depletion and lower brain function. Foods such as refined carbohydrates, including white bread, white pastas, and white flours, and white rice, they'll provide immediate but temporary mood uplift. By consuming complex carbohydrates such as whole grain cereals, whole grain pastas, and brown rice, you are more likely to have a prolonged mood elevating benefit due to the positive association between the amino acid tryptophan and mental health. How does this happen? Well, the amino acid tryptophan is the least abundant amino acid to come by. Tryptophan is converted into serotonin, which when increases in the brain, when levels increase in the brain, it reduces symptoms of depression and contributes to feelings of well-being and happiness. When we consume a protein-rich meal, such as a hamburger or a steak, then tryptophan is the last amino acid to cross the blood-brain barrier. It has to wait its turn after the more abundant amino acids enter. But when eating a whole grain carbohydrate-rich meal with sufficient protein, tryptophan is available for the brain because when carbohydrate-rich foods are consumed, then the body releases insulin, which diverts the other amino acids into the muscles but leaves tryptophan untouched. This provides a better ground for tryptophan to enter the brain and to promote its nourishing effect on the brain through serotonin. On the other hand, consumption of an average amount of alcohol has been shown to decrease tryptophan levels by about 25%, leading to a similar decrease in serotonin. So you want to increase tryptophan-rich foods in your, in your diet, and these include spirulina, chia seeds, sesame seeds, watermelon seeds, flax seeds, cashews, pistachios, of course not salted, yeah? Almonds, potatoes, and soya beans. So number two, drinking plenty of water in little amounts throughout the day. Our brain is comprised of 75% water and it needs regular rehydration since our body can't store water. Our brain must be well hydrated in order to function properly. And when the brain is not receiving enough water, it will dehydrate. Symptoms of dehydration include headaches, feeling tired, all sorts of mood changes, slow responses and confusion, which all exasperate symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. So how much water is enough? 
Well, to calculate the amount of water you need to consume a day, just multiply your weight in kilograms by 0 0.14, and you'll get the amount of cups of water you need to consume daily. But what about the water source? Will any water do, you may be asking? Well, the answer is, of course, not. No. High levels of chlorine used to disinfect water and fluoride used to stop dental decay are all found in tap water and can disrupt brain function. The best way to avoid any health interference from water is to ensure that you have a good water filter at home or to consume pure spring water, of course. Now, water uh, filters are available for any pocket and they do the job of ensuring that you have clean and steady water supply awaiting for you. And more than that, it makes water really accessible and you find that you tend to drink more when the more it's accessible. It is also important to mention that the, it's important to focus on the right beverages for optimal brain functioning. Pure water is of course the best drink, but also caffeine-free, pure herbal teas and no more than two cups of freshly ground coffee a day are other good options. Anything other than these beverages should be completely avoided. When drinking water, rather than any other beverage, you are satisfying your water needs without adding any energy in the form of calories to your diet and without adding the chemicals of artificial sweeteners that are poisonous to your brain and your body. It is good to mention also that water actually helps remove waste products from our cells and transport important nutrients into our cells. And water cleanses and rids our body and our brain of toxins and allows the body to function at its best. Number three, remove all processed foods from your diet. I agree that processed foods are very tasty. They are intently made so through the use of food science brain science, and even evolutionary science, which makes these foods as tasty and addictive as possible. Our limbic brains are attracted to sugar-rich, fat-laden, and salty foods because these are the foods that ensured our body and our brain survival over time. Processed foods with these ingredients send signals of reward to our brains, giving us immediate pleasure and make us crave more of them. But these foods actually wreak havoc on your mood and on your health. Food has a direct impact on our mood and the wrong foods will spiral you into real depression. If you want to start gradually removing processed foods from your diet and you can start by reducing salt and sugar. It's not easy to reduce salt or sugar intake, but the real cravings for these foods last less than a week and then you begin to reduce their intake and your taste buds will soon have an affinity for natural foods. Now salt is found in not only in the salt shaker but also in all of the processed foods in high quantities and in different forms. Salt adds a strong flavor while also acting as a preservative. High quantities of salt have been associated with many diseases including stroke, cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, and stomach cancer, but it also dehydrates our brain cells, reducing brain function. The best way to reduce salt consumption is to replace it with vegetable salt or with natural vegetables that have a higher sodium content, including celery, kale, and seaweed. And you also want to reduce sugar consumption. A diet high in sugar will raise inflammation levels throughout the body and the brain. And now research is tying inflammation to incidences of depression. By lowering your levels of chronic inflammation through the reduction of plain sugar in your diet, you will, in turn, improve your mood. Now, where is sugar found? Pretty much everywhere. Since m most of us love sugar or salt, these additives are added to almost all of the processed unnatural foods. Sugar is added to your morning coffee or your tea, your breads, your meats, breakfast cereals, and so on. And we even add it to our own foods. It's, it's also in ketchup and, and all sorts of, almost everything that is processed, and even in fruit juices. It is incredibly abundant in our everyday diet. 
it damages our liver and leads to hormonal imbalances, it raises our cholesterol levels and leads to high blood pressure and is a risk factor for heart and kidney disease. So we wanna reduce it. And I recommend you start by reading the food labels before buying. Now it is important not only to look, not to look at the calorie content or the protein content of these foods, but to look at the, at the ingredient content to see if there are any additives or flavorings added to the foods to make them look and taste and feel different from what they really are. So when you look at, at, at the food labels, you will see all sorts of ingredients. Try to avoid the ingredients that you can't pronounce or those that begin with an E number. The British Journal of Psychology looked at more than 3,000 people and found that those who ate the most processed foods faced increased risk of suffering from depression, while those who ate the most whole foods had much, much lower odds. Okay, let's move on to number four. Number four is to consume plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables. Consuming plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables due to, the, due to their high levels of antioxidants, which are required to protect our brain cells from free radical damage that is caused by many factors, including stress and even negative thinking. Specific antioxidant-rich foods have been shown to reduce excessive accumulation of free radicals in the brain and brain cells have a naturally high risk for oxidative damage and they require special antioxidant protection at all times. So consume different types of fruits and vegetables to ensure a wide variation of antioxidants. Consume fruits and vegetables also with different bold coloring. This will ensure that you get plenty of different types of antioxidants through your diet that will support your brain and protect it. Number five get plenty of sleep. You need sleep as much as you need to breathe and eat. Sleep deprivation leaves the brain exhausted so it won't perform properly. While sleeping, your mental energy is restored and a lack of sleep may even cause your brain to stop producing new cells. Deep sleep triggers the body to release growth hormones that promote normal growth and helps in healing and the repair of cells and tissues in people of all ages. Getting enough sleep is vital for healthy brain function. When you're deprived of your sleep, your brain won't function properly, affecting your cognitive abilities and your emotional state as well. It was proven that sleep deprivation has a more powerful effect on the clarity of our thought and on the rate of our reaction than alcohol consumption. Normal sleep is, brings us back, it restores our body and our brain function. And the immune system relies on sleep to remain, to keep our bodies healthy. Ongoing sleep deficiency changes immune system function and reduces immunity and increases the risk for developing chronic illnesses, including mental illness. If you are serious about improving your mental health, the first step is simple. Just get enough sleep at night. Number six, omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids are important for the brain. They play a critical role in brain function and in mood. Omega-3 fatty acids are linked with depression and other mental health conditions, and these are essential fatty acids, meaning that the body can't produce them. We must consume these essential fatty acids from our diet, and the healthiest form of these fatty acids actually come from very simple foods, including chia seeds, flax seeds, and walnuts. These fatty acids keep the dopamine levels in our brain high and increase neural cell growth, and the frontal cortex of your brain involved in, in thinking, it increases blood flow to, the, to the, that part of the brain. So make sure you are consuming these foods rich in omega-3 fatty acids on a regular basis. Number seven, exercise. Specific forms of exercise encourage the brain to function at optimum capacity by causing nerve cells to multiply and strengthening their interconnections between the cells and protecting them from damage. Exercise increases the production of brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, 
which is a member of the brain growth factors. BDNF is one of the most active brain growth factors and acts on specific neurons, supporting their survival and encouraging new brain cell growth and helps create new neural networks. BDNF is very important in helping us form new behavioral patterns. There are several ways to increase BDNF in the brain, and these include the dietary guidelines that I'm giving you here in this lesson, and also to do endurance exercise, such as even walking or running. I truly recommend incorporating at least three one-hour blocks of walking into your weekly routine schedule in order to increase BDNF production, which supports brain cell growth, the creation of new neural networks, and the protection of existing brain cells. Okay, let's move on to number eight, getting out into the sun. This will help you maintain optimal vitamin D levels. There are vitamin D receptors in the brain, the spinal cord, and the central nervous system. And vitamin D is involved in maintaining the health of our brains. There is even evidence that vitamin D helps our brains get rid of certain toxins. So vitamin D deficiency is very common in the Western world. Most of us are not getting enough sunlight, and vitamin D deficiency is linked to mental disorders and even to depression. So try to reveal a small part of your body to direct sunlight for at least 10 minutes a day, not through a window. And if this is not possible for you, then I sincerely suggest taking vitamin D3 supplements. Now number nine and the last one. It's reducing the amount of television viewing. Television affects our brain chemistry and allows our subconscious mind to accept information without having any guard over what enters our mind and what not. This is a highly unrecommended activity and I would recommend reducing television viewing to no more than one hour a day. This, the shows that are created nowadays are luring because they play on our fears and they even increase them. And television commercials are also, should be out of the question, they are made to psychologically brainwash us. If you want more control over your health, your brain function, and your life overall, I would just really suggest limiting passive television viewing. Now this may seem like a drastic step, but once you do it, you will be thrilled by the new activities that you will have time to take part in and will enrich your life. So let's summarize the steps. Number one, eat whole grain carbohydrate rich foods throughout the day, such as whole wheat bread, brown, uh, whole wheat pasta, brown bread, brown rice, all sorts of whole grains. And drink plenty of water, also potatoes, sorry. Also potatoes are good. Drink, number two, drink plenty of water in little amounts throughout the day to ensure brain hydration. Number three, remove all processed foods from your diet, especially sugar, salt, and the chemical-rich processed foods. All those chemicals, those E numbers. Number four, consume plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables for their high levels of antioxidants that protect the brain from free radical damage. Number five, get plenty of sleep to ensure that your hormones are balanced and that you are in the best state and to prevent depression. And number six, consume lots of omega-3 fatty acid-rich foods, which are important for brain function and include chia seeds, flax seeds, walnuts, excellent. Add them to your diet on a regular basis. Number seven, get sufficient exercise with an emphasis on endurance exercise, especially walking, because it's fun and we can commit to it for long term. And number eight, get out into the sun for vitamin D, which prevents depression. And number nine, reduce the amount of television you are viewing on a daily basis. Now, I hope that this has helped you and now you understand a little bit about the influence of food choices on the mental, your mental health. And I am wishing you really all the best and may you find the path to health and to happiness and find your bliss in life for the world needs your gifts. So to your health and happiness, thank you very much.